Hi everybody, it's James Mahoney here from Black Lobster Academy. Welcome to part 7 of my introduction to Adobe Photoshop for illustrators and artists. In the last episode we covered basic transformations, focusing mainly on the workhorse of transformations, the free transformation tool, as well as creating and using pattern fills, but also touching on the warp tool, liquify, and puppet warp. In this episode we're going to cover the vector graphics of Photoshop. This means paths and shapes and we'll cover the pen tool in pretty good detail. Let's do it. Vectors. Since the early days in computer graphics, the field was divided into two camps, vector and raster. Raster graphics, or bitmaps, are best for tonal images, or images with complex color modulation, like photographs. Vector graphics are best for shapes, or simpler designs, like cartoons. Whereas a bitmap image is made up of pixels, which we talked about a little bit in episode 1, vectors are based on lines that are expressed mathematically. But don't worry, you won't see any of the math involved. Let's compare these two circles. On the left is a bitmap circle, or a raster image. It's made up of pixels. On the right is a vector circle, defined by a Bezier curve. If we increase the resolution of this image way up, like this, you can see that the bitmap circle gets blurry while the vector remains crisp. This is because the vector definition of a shape is independent of the file size. Also, if you want to change the shape of a circle in any complex way, the vector representation is much more flexible. So bitmaps are best for photograph-like images, and vectors are usually superior for shape-based images. This episode is all about working with vectors. One thing that sometimes confuses new users is the difference between paths and shapes. A path is the mathematical description of a line, which looks like this representation on the left. It has no colored areas, whereas a shape is something you can create with a path by giving it a fill color and creating a line around the shape. So a shape's form is defined with a path but a path is not necessarily a shape. This should be very clear by the end of this video. Paths are super useful. They can be used to define text, shapes, masks, and what is created by the pen tool. Path basics. A path is made up of a series of anchor points, or sometimes called control points. Each control point may or may not have an adjustment handle. You position these control points or anchor points at the beginning and end of a curve and adjust the handles to define the curvature between the points. A long adjustment handle will have more influence over the curve. A shorter one will have less influence. Multiple anchor points are strung together to create complex curves. An anchor with a straight line for a handle will produce a smooth curve. An anchor point with a long adjustment handle will be smoother. An anchor with a bent handle will create an abrupt change in the curve or a cusp. And anchors with no handles do not influence the curve, like a corner. You can use the path selection tools to edit the curves. The black arrow is the path selection tool and works with the path as a whole, while the white one allows you to edit anchor points and adjustment handles. Holding down the command key will switch to the opposite one. With the black arrow you can move the whole path. And as you would expect by now holding down the option key will duplicate the path. And holding down the shift key will constrain the move. With the white arrow or direct selection tool active, clicking on a curve will expose the two points and adjustment handles that define that portion of the path's curve. You can then click and drag the anchor points around or click and drag the handle points around to change the curve.
If you click an anchor point, you will see the four relevant adjustment points surrounding the selected point. The square that indicates an anchor point will turn dark to indicate that it's selected. You can click and drag it around. You can click and drag the adjustment points around as well. If you hold down the Option and Command key, the tool switches to the, this angle cursor. This is the Convert Point tool. With this tool, if you click and drag an adjustment point, it will create a cusp. Click on a point with handles and it will create a corner point without handles. Click and drag on a cusp or a corner point to get your handles back. With either of the arrow tools, you can select multiple by clicking and dragging out a big rectangle around what you want to select. Pen tool. There are a number of ways to generate paths, but the pen tool is the main one. I love the pen tool, and I know that sometimes beginners have trouble with it. I really hope this explanation will help you find that the pen tool is not just very powerful, but also kind of fun to work with. Up here in the options bar, click Auto, Add, Delete. And oddly buried inside this gear button, you can turn on rubber band mode. There's two good ways to make paths using the pen tool. One is to lay out your anchor points where you want them, and then go back and adjust the curves and cusps as you need them. The other way is to use the modifier keys to create cusps and corners as you lay out your curve. With the pen tool active, generally you place a point and then drag to generate a handle. In general, you want to drag in the direction you're creating the curve. But don't worry, if it's the wrong way, you can tell by the resulting curve, and you can easily just grab the handle and rotate it around. If you don't drag, you create a corner. A sequence of these will create straight lines. Holding the Command key will temporarily switch to the Direct Selection tool, which is the, uh, the white arrow. The Option key will temporarily switch to the Convert Point tool. And the Shift key will constrain the placement of new anchor points. If you hover over the first anchor point, the cursor will show the little circle, meaning that this will close the shape. At any time, with the Pen tool active and Auto Add Delete turned on, if your cursor is over an anchor point, it switches to the Delete Anchor tool. See the little minus sign? Click to delete existing anchors. Or if your cursor is over the path but not over an anchor, you'll see a little plus sign. Click to add a new anchor at that point. With just a little practice, you'll find that these modifiers and tools work really well together and makes it easy to quickly create whatever shape you want. Hit escape when you're done creating a path. The key to being good at making shapes is to understand that you place anchor points at the beginning and end of each curve, and not in the middle at the peak of the curve. And also, to try to use as few anchor points as possible, otherwise your shapes get lumpy and difficult to control. Using these options up here on the options bar, you can convert the path to a selection or a shape. It will automatically close the shape if it's not already closed. If you create a shape this way, or by using the Shape tool, you end up with a shape layer. You can recognize this by the graphic in the Layers thumbnail. In many ways, it behaves just like a regular layer. You can move them around, access these menus, and even apply a layer style to it. With this switch, your path can be used to create a clipping mask. This works just like the mask we went over in episode 5 on layers, but instead of a bitmap that you can paint on, you have a vector shape with all of its flexibility. Shape Tool
As I mentioned, shapes are vectors that are filled or have outlines on them that are defined by a path. And so all the path tools work with them. You can access the shape tools from this pop-out menu. This drop-down menu here on the options bar will let you switch between creating a path, a shape, or pixels, which is a bitmap. Let's work with shapes. Now you'll see in the options bar that you can set the fill color, line color, or stroke, and stroke thickness. Notice also that you've now got a shape layer. Right click on the layer to bring up the layer menu and you can choose rasterize to convert this to just a regular pixel layer. You can access a library of vector shapes with the custom shape tool selected. When you click on the little shape drop down list here and then click on the gear icon in the upper right. Load whatever shapes you want and then choose from the list the shape that you want. You then click and drag out a shape onto the canvas. Of course you can edit these shapes as you would any other path. With a shape layer selected, the pen tool will automatically create new shapes on that layer. You can adjust the shape's fill opacity here. If you right click on a shape you've made, you can create your own custom shapes. Or you can convert the shape to a selection. Other paths. Text in Photoshop is also based on paths, and so there are a few options available to you when you create some text. Right click on the layer to access these options. You can rasterize to convert the text to pixels. You can convert to a shape layer or make it your work path. We'll get to work paths in a minute. The real tool for working with vectors and paths is Illustrator. Adobe has made it easy to create paths in Illustrator and to bring them into Photoshop. It's also true for Flash, which is essentially a vector-based program also. Working with paths. Finally, I want to cover the basics of the paths panel and show you some of the cool things you can do there. Whenever you're creating a path, Photoshop will designate that to be the work path and it will create a layer-like entry in the Paths panel. With the Pen tool active, you can deselect the work path by hitting Escape or click on the panel outside a path. If you now create another path, the old one is lost. But if you give the work path a name by double-clicking on the name, it will be saved with the PSD file. So now, if you deselect the path and create a new work path, you can see that the path is preserved. If you have a shape layer selected, its path shows up here while it's selected. If you double click and rename it, it will create a copy of the path. So now you've converted your shape into a saved path. Okay, let's look at the useful buttons down here at the bottom of the paths panel. With the path selected, you can convert that shape into a selection with this button. If you have a pixel layer selected in the Layers panel, you can fill a shape defined by the path selected here using this button. And if you have a pixel layer selected, you can use the path selected here to stroke the path using whatever brush type tool you have active, a paintbrush, eraser, whatever. Even cooler, if your brush has the angle jitter setting set to Direction, it will follow the direction of the path. That's pretty cool, huh? In my digital illustration course offered at blacklobsteracademy.com, we use this feature for all kinds of very cool things. Well, that wraps up this episode on using vectors in Photoshop. We covered using the pen tool, shape layers, and the paths panel. In the next episode, I'll go over image and layer adjustments like curves, hue saturation, lightness, color balance, etc., as well as the most useful filters for art and illustration. Thanks a lot, and as always, I appreciate any feedback, likes, and subscribes.